Hi, I'm Em from 21 Readers, and this is going to be a book of the month reading vlog, reading my three January picks. I haven't made a reading vlog in over a year, but the reason I'm doing one is because I had a three-day weekend with a magical fourth day because of snow to read my three picks. First in this vlog, I'll be reading Interesting Facts About Space, then I'll be reading The Fury, and finally I'll be reading First Lie Wins. Enjoy the vlog. This is my Saturday night update where I'm trying to read my three January book of the month picks all in one weekend. Driving home from work last night, Friday night, I was thinking about how I have a three day weekend and how it might be a four day weekend because it's supposed to snow Monday night. So if we do have a snow day on Tuesday, that would be a four day weekend. The potential for a Tuesday snow day means I would have more time to finish these three books. Made me excited at the idea of trying vlogging. In my attempt at a reading vlog, I'm going to make it structured. The structure for this vlog is going to be I'm only updating once a day wherever I am in a book and I'm going to have a book update and then a non-book update because I've noticed that people that do reading vlogs give information about their life outside of reading and so I guess I'll try to do that by doing once a day update, book update, non-book update, next clip. Now that the structure for the reading vlog has been established, I'll get into my Saturday night update. The three books that I have for this video are Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin, a contemporary fiction, The Fury by Alex Michaelides, a thriller, and First Fly Wins by Ashley Elston, a thriller. So since there are two thrillers, I was assuming that the order I would read my book of the month this month is thriller, non-thriller, thriller. However, there have been some developments since my January book of the month video. That development is regarding this book, Interesting Facts About Space. So so over the summer in July, I requested this book on NetGalley and I didn't hear anything at all for over six months. If you're familiar with NetGalley, it's a website you can request advanced readers copies of books to review before they get published. And usually the result is you get accepted or you get rejected. But there are two subcategories that can also happen. One is that you get soft rejected, which is you don't get an email that you were rejected, but the request just goes into your declined requests column without telling you so you kind of have to look for it and then the other one is that you just get ghosted meaning you just never hear back from the publisher the book publishes and you just are none the wiser never hear back from them so you aren't rejected you're just ignored so this book i was ghosted for over six months for hearing back what my status was and then last week after I had already received this physical copy from Book of the Month, I got accepted for my NetGalley request, even though I requested this back in July. I gave all that context about NetGalley to say that now I'm bumping this up in my priorities for wanting to read before those two thrillers because I like to keep my NetGalley feedback score above a 90%, and now that I got accepted for this book, it dipped below a 90, so I want to get to this one before the thrillers. That being said, I started with this one. I started it last night, Friday night, and now it's Saturday night, and I'm exactly 50% of the way through it. On chapter six. It's very long chapters. This one is looking like a five star, which is not surprising. This is why I picked it. It was one of my most anticipated books of this year because her previous book, Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead, had such a unique narrator style that I knew I would like this one too. And this one is reading very similar to that book. It's a slice of life story and we get these short paragraphs about different parts of her day, about different topics, and that's the whole book. So it does read pretty fast because it feels like you're just reading a bunch of different paragraphs of different excerpts of like a journal or something. But the reason that this feels like it could be a five star is because of the voice of this narrator. She's a lesbian and she works for a space agency. She's always listening to true crime podcasts as a way of escaping. She also thinks somebody's following her and we don't know as the reader if she's actually being followed or it's because she's listening to these true crime podcasts. And then the space element besides her job is that whenever she interacts with her half sisters she feels guilty for interacting with them and then always calls her mom up to tell her interesting facts about space and we're kind of also learning that like it seems like the mom just like our main character reads as neurodivergent and or having some type of mental illness and so sometimes we get more in depth about things and sometimes she's very scattered going from topic to topic but i'm very invested in it it's keeping my interest. I have a feeling that when this one's done, I'm gonna want another 100 pages or so. Although I know slice of life stories aren't for everybody. This main character's personality isn't necessarily palatable. That's what makes her enjoyable for me. But I have a feeling that this will be a five star and I'm probably going to finish it either later tonight or tomorrow. Now getting into my non-reading updates, my highlights for today, Saturday, are that I had a podcast listening day where I like to catch up on my podcast on Saturday mornings while I do laundry and go on a walk. Specifically, my main two favorite podcasts nowadays are 
Los Culturistas with Bo and Yang and Matt Rogers. And Bo and Matt talk about things in pop culture. And my other main podcast is called Little Gold Men and they talk about the Oscars. And coincidentally, Matt and Bowen were catching up on Oscar films in this week's podcast. So that was particularly fun to get to hear them talk about the Oscars. And then the Little Gold Men podcast was talking about Golden Globes reactions from last week and talking about the Emmys, which are on Monday night. Sunday night update. I finished Interesting Facts About Space and I'm giving it five stars. This is one of my favorite main characters I've ever read from in recent memory. And the fact that I'm reading this so early in the calendar year means that it's gonna be hard to find another favorite character the rest of the calendar year. This is my first time ever tabbing things. I often see other booktubers showing tabs and I've never really felt compelled to do so. But so many of the passages with how she describes being worried about things or being hyper vigilant about things connected with me and I was really impressed with how the author brought closure to our main character's struggles with trauma, hypervigilance, hyperfixations, and how that affected her relationships, both work, romantic relationships, friendships, and family relationships. And I was thinking about why this was a solid five and not her previous book, Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. And I think it's because the author closed the loop with her mental health and with those relationships, whereas the slice of life storytelling in that one, I didn't feel like we got as much closure from this. This one's a pretty quick read. Our main character's personality and writing style might not be for everybody, but if it is for you, it will be solidly for you. And the author even addresses that in her author's note, saying to anyone who identifies with Enid, I'm glad we found each other, Enid being our main character. This one officially releases on January 30th, and I'm pumped to be able to recommend this to my other friends who enjoy reading Queer Lit so that we can discuss her inner thoughts. This one I almost enjoyed reading her inner thoughts more than the actual plot that was going on and I think that's another reason that this book stood out to me more than her other one because there was a little bit more plot going on here than her other one. As for my next read I was deciding between The Fury and First Lie Wins. I ended up picking The Fury for a couple reasons. One, it's shorter. Two, I'm eager to see how this one's going to compare to his other two books, The Silent Patient and The Maidens. And also I have a feeling I'm going to like this one less than First Lie Wins based on ratings I've been seeing online. I'm only 30 pages in on chapter six so I don't have much to say. My main comments are that we found out why the book is called The Fury because the word for the fury in Greek on this Greek island is for the wind so strong winds are a theme so far in these first five chapters. And then another thing I noticed is I immediately remembered oh yeah this author likes to have classical art and humanities type references in his books. Like I recall the maidens had to do with something with Greek literature or theater or plays and then the silent patient had to do with famous art and so this one I can already tell is gonna have some art and humanities themes tied in. I went ahead and tabbed when he quoted something that happened in the story Clytemnestra because he explains what happened so I'm guessing we're gonna have some type of foreshadowing or full circle moment with the twist so I tabbed it to see if I was right and the maidens I remember it was kind of easy to predict what happened so we'll see if it's easy to predict for the fury. As for my non-bookish updates today my one thing of note today is that I got to talk to my good friend today about the Mean Girls movie because she finally saw it and it was special because her and I had previously seen Mean Girls the Musical in its pre-Broadway tryout as well as on Broadway together so it was fun to do an in-deep chat about what we thought about the movie. It was one of those weird things going into this Mean Girls movie coming out where since I knew it was going to have the Mean Girls musical songs in it I was feeling protective over it and not wanting to hear non-theater people's criticisms of it but I was also excited for people to get to experience it for the first time since I've known these songs since 2017 when I first saw it. So it's been an exciting weekend hearing Mean Girls reviews and I've just been trying to ignore negative takes on it and mainly just celebrate it with my other musical theater friends. Monday night update. I just found out 10 minutes ago that I do have a snow day tomorrow. So as I expected when I started this vlog, I will get a fourth day to read and finish my January book of the month picks. And today I finished The Fury. Last night I read up until 25% and then this morning I read from 25% till the end. This was a very quick read. It's only 300 pages and the chapters are very short. So short that we have a lot of pages that only have this much text on them. Them. So this one is a very quick read and can easily be read in half a day 
less than one day. I'm giving this a four star. I felt like this was gonna be a three for about the first half of the book. The first third was very quick and then we kind of slogged through the middle a little and I was firmly thinking this was gonna be a three but then the last third I thought the twists were fun and so that's why I'm bumping it up to a four. This one's a whodunit because we have a group of seven people on a Greek island. One of them's a movie star and one of them ends up dead and the point of view we're following for this one is a man named Elliot who has known the movie star for decades and so we get to know the past of a lot of the people on the island as well as his relationship with the movie star. While reading this part of me was wondering why do we need this book in 2024 and I think maybe some of the mental health conversations that were happening in this book were trying to be something new with the genre or maybe doing a little bit more of a deep dive with our main character and I think in addition to the setting that's one of the things that this author has I've noticed tried to do in all three of his books is go a little bit more deeper with our main characters inner psyche which does make his books stand out. So we have the setting, we have the main character's inner psyche, and then we have him connecting to literature, arts, and humanities in all three of his books. And so for that reason, I appreciate that he tries to do something new with the genre and his books stand out for that reason. Because even though this book is going to be pretty forgettable since I read it in less than 24 hours, I think it will end up sticking more in my head than some other mystery thrillers that I'll end up reading this year because of those distinct features. I'll have to look a little bit more deeper as to why this is getting lower ratings, but based on the low Goodreads rating, I was thinking this was gonna be a three or a two but I thought it was fun and the fact that this author tries to be distinctive in his thrillers and have elements that stand out compared to other mystery thrillers I do appreciate. That being said this was a five star and this was a four star so so far in the vlog we have interesting facts about space as my favorite and the fury as my second favorite. My final book will be First Lie Wins which I will likely either start late tonight or tomorrow on my snow day and I'm seeing positive reviews for this one and this one's also a Reese's Book Club pick in January which it hadn't yet been picked for Reese's Book Club when I first picked this as my January Book of the Month pick but it was exciting to see that Reese also picked this for January, which means that considering this one's getting positive reviews, I'm assuming this one's gonna be quite buzzy all year. I don't think that Reese has had a popular mystery thriller pick since The Guest List in 2020. Oh, there was also, what was that other one? The last thing he told me. Okay, the guest list and the last thing he told me was 2021. So in 2022 and 2023, if I recall correctly, she did not have a thriller that blew up. As for my non-bookish update, my main thing I'm excited for tonight is the Emmys. The Emmys are the biggest award show for TV and usually they're in September, but because of a strike, they got bumped to January tonight, January 15th. And the voting window and eligibility was still the same as if it was in September. The show just got bumped to tonight in January. And I don't really watch much TV anymore, especially since I mainly read. However, I am looking forward to seeing Succession win. I'm assuming it's going to be sweeping in all of the categories that it's nominated for. Since it was its final season, this is going to be its final Emmys and I haven't really watched a show that I've been as excited about since Succession ended. So looking forward to that final Succession closure with its wins tonight. Tuesday night update. Today I had a snow day off work and I spent the whole day reading. As a matter of fact, I got a work email in the evening saying, Hi everyone, hope you all enjoyed the winter weather and made some fun memories. And I read that thinking, oh, a lot of people went outside and enjoyed the snow. And I did not. I stayed in all day reading this. I would say I made some fun memories with this book though, because this was a five star. And when I say my thoughts on it, it might sound a bit hyperbolic, but I'm not trying to exaggerate. It's just gonna come across that way. This is the most impressively plotted thriller I think I've ever read. I was immensely impressed with how this story was told and it's laughable. Some of the thrillers that I considered five stars last year slash some of the thrillers that Book of the Month put in their nominations to even put those books in the same playing field as this book. This is one of those books where you rethink everything about the genre. That's how impressed I was with this book. I'll explain what this book is about and then try to give more examples of what I mean. Our main character in this one starts the book moving in with this guy she's been seeing for a few weeks and we find out that she is not who she says she is and she has a different identity on and we're basically trying to figure out why she was sent here to have this fake identity and why she's with this guy. Those are the present day chapters. We also have chapters in the past from other identities that this woman has taken on and one of the things that clued me in early that I knew I was gonna love this book is I was incredibly invested in those chapters in the past with her previous identities and other books I have read that have had this similar concept such as The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark, an adult thriller where the main character has different identities 
and The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp, which is the YA thriller where the main character has different identities. I did not care about their past identities. I was always like, okay, let's get back to the main story here. But for all of the past chapters where we find out her other identities, I was incredibly invested and I could read 50 more pages of just that story. This book was so well thought out from the characters to how things were tied together to why things were put in a certain order. It made me kind of think to myself, like, why did I rate some of these thrillers that I've read in the past year four and five stars when this should be the gold standard for thrillers. I could really tell how much work that the author put into her character development and the story and the twists. I was constantly guessing what was going on but then I was always two steps behind what the author was planning. This is going to be my new go-to five-star thriller recommendation that I recommend to people. How refreshing it was to read a five-star thriller at the beginning of this year that I can now go and recommend to people. It was one of those books I was having verbal reactions to at some of the twists and I was even tearing up at some parts. This was a snow day well spent and I definitely made the right choice with reading this thriller last after the fury and whereas the fury has very short chapters these weren't short chapters they were about 10 pages each but i did like what they were consistently 10 pages each it felt like all the chapters were about the same length i'm so eager for more readers to read this so i can hear people's reactions and hear what stood out to other people about this book my final non-bookish update i guess the emmys last night succession won everything in its category like i expected the only other non-bookish thing that happened today is that the great gatsby musical announced that it's transferring to Broadway and I saw it in October in New Jersey in its premiere and I'm really pumped for more people to see it and pumped that I made the effort to make that trip to see it early. Now I'm pumped for more people to see it when it transfers to Broadway. That's my non-bookish update. Now to wrap up what I read. Interesting Facts About Space was a five star. I haven't connected to a main character this much in a long time and her personality and her ways of thinking about things and about being perceived is something that I'm going to resonate with for a long time. The Fury. This is one that you could read in an afternoon very quick pretty forgettable but the Greek island setting was fun I liked that it was a fast read and he tried with his mental health representation and finally we have first fly wins which is the new gold standard for how mystery thrillers should be it rejuvenated my love for the genre it's gonna be my new thriller recommendations for both internet friends and in real life friends I was completely invested and thrilled to have a book to think so highly of in this first month of the year and I think the real unsung hero of this vlog was the snow because if it weren't for this snow day incoming where I thought I was going to have four days to read, I probably would have waited till the very end of the month to get to these. So this is a fun excuse to vlog and read all of these in the middle of the month. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on any of these books and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!